Hello everyone and uh, welcome back to what's now turned out to be a series of birds. Um, the reason I'm doing birds is I've got a, a big commission to do with lots of different kinds of birds, 12 actually different kinds of birds. And I'm just familiarising myself with them by painting a little 8x10 of each one. So when it comes to putting them on the commission, I've got some idea of the right colours to use and um, what what they look like, what the shape is, exactly, and that sort of thing. So I'm trying to relatively quickly, because I've got only got about six weeks to do this commission, um, work my way through these birds. So there's going to be quite a few of them coming out you thick and fast, but they will make an. I'm, you know, I'm going to keep mine, and I think I'm going to put them on the wall because I think they'll make a nice display, all sort of together on the wall. So I hope you have a go. I hope you, you know, you enjoy doing them and I hope you learn something. Um, if we can just look down, we'll see what we've done so far. This was the last one uh, that we did, which was the robin. And I like the background, although I changed it considerably. I did like the background. I like the fence posts, but I didn't like the robin that was on there. He was, um, he wasn't the nicest robin I'd ever seen. So I'll just pull this off and I'll show you what I mean. There. It, it just didn't float my boat too much, really. Um, so I stuck on another robin, which I did like, over the top of him. And I put him just where the where the feet from the old robin join on, the, on this one. Now, I think it's a different size. It is slightly bigger, but I'm not worried about that. Uh, scale's not really that important and what are you going to judge the scale against anyway the fence posts well they could be any size so we're all right with that and there's our finished robin looking splendid on top of the fence posts like your eye tech photoshop yeah photoshop yeah <laughs> photoshop by poundland <laughs> this is what you do this is what you do when you're not really great at photoshop because oh, i don't know I can do things on Photoshop. I've been using Photoshop for probably, I don't know, 20 years. Yeah, 20 years, I'd say. So I can, I can use it, but it just seems to take so long. So I just cut it out and stuck it on and it worked. Um, the other one that we did, I didn't tape. Um, and it's this heron. And I think he's turned out really nicely. He's standing in what looks like kind of muddy water. Um, with some foliage behind him and I painted the whole canvas black before I began even under where the heron was um, to, to give us some nice dark foliage in the background and I really like how he turned out actually. So that's those two and today we are going for bird number three which is this kestrel. Now he is a fine bird, bird of prey of course, look at his beak, we'll tell you that. Um, but the background is a bit dull, really. I mean, I know, you know, the picture and what I want to get out of it isn't the background. I, I just want to paint the bird, but I do want to be left with quite a nice picture at the end of it. So what I've done is I've quickly given this a couple of coats of that green that we use, which is called Burnt Green Earth. Um, it's a dark, muddy sort of green. Um, and it's, you can see it's still streaky, actually, even after two coats. But what I intend to do is just to sponge lightly some other colours on there, just to give the idea that there's something going on behind them. Um, what I'm going to use, I was going to use my nice new lasso paint, but it's too good for sponging. <laughs> so I'm just going to use this, um, the Burnt Umber, uh, the abstract paint that I usually use and we'll sponge a little bit of this on. I don't want it to look too in your face I just want it to look like something. So I've got I've got lots of uh, sponges actually because you usually buy them in packs of five or seven that sort of uh, size pack um, but I've just selected these two no apparent reason. This one was just um bath sponge that I bought from b and I think and just chopped it up so I've got different size holes on different faces of it. What you do have to be careful of when you're sponging is 
don't get it in that position and just keep doing that because then you've got a stump and you'll just be stamping the same shape all over and it won't look um it won't look right so let's give this one a try first off i can't remember using this before but um so you just drop it in the water they're quite hard these natural sponges when they're dry soon soften up when they're wet um, and squeeze the water through it and I can feel it it's getting very soft now so squeeze the water out tight as you can uh, and put it into your towel that you use to wipe your brushes off and squeeze it some more so you get a good lot of water out of there virtually all that's in there and now as I said I'm going to use this colour so I'm just going to tamp my sponge into it you want the sponge covered but you don't you want too much it's a bit like stenciling you want coverage but you don't want masses um, because then you won't get any definition of where the where the holes are so let's try this yeah that's quite nice just can you can you see it um Mr. F on the camera? Not especially. Not especially. Well it's maybe if I zoom in a little. There's not that much to see if I'm honest with you. But it does just break up the background. And we'll come in with a, a lighter colour in a minute. We'll put some white into this. Or some olive green. Try and give it a bit of additional light just for this bit. Does that help? So as you put it on, twist your, your sponge around because as I say, you don't want that stamping look. Not sure exactly where the bird goes, so I'll just... So there, that's... That's, that's quite nice, I quite like that. So I'm just going to put a lighter colour into here. Um, and I think I might just use that olive green and see what that gives me. Ooh. Just put it there just in case it's not, not what I want. Um, I've lost my spatula, here it is. So let's take a bit of that and I'll mix it into here, see what we get. maybe a bit lighter than that we do want some you know want it to look different taking the time to do it we want it to look a little bit different yeah like that i think that might be light enough for our second and i'm not washing the sponge out it it just doesn't really need it it'll just pick up this paint just fine with the paint that's already on it. Let's see if that's, yeah, that is a little bit lighter. That's, that's nice. It's just giving us a background. It's not going to detract from the bird at all, um, but it is going to be there like we cared. We cared enough about the bird to give him the background. And as I say, keep twisting your sponge. Keep reloading if, if it dries out, but not too much paint because then you won't, it'll sort of fill all the cells in in the sponge and you won't actually see this effect. It'll just be blobby and nobody likes Mr. Blobby. Well, actually, that's not true, is it? So if you see any bits that are sort of, you think look a bit blobby, tamp them in a little bit. I'm fortunately going to come back with a lighter colour so these bits here that are a bit uh, blobby will get sorted out. Sorted out. So I'm just going to come back in with some raw sienna, mix it into that mixture again. I don't want it really light. Just enough. Just enough. So let's mix that up with our, our palette knife. 
Surprising how much paint there is there spread across the uh, palette. Palette is the word I'm looking for. Right, so that's just a slightly lighter tone there again. Um, it's the lightest of all of them and it's the one we'll finish on. Charge your sponge up. It's quite satisfying actually doing this. I quite like it. Because it, it really can't go wrong. Ah, oh, look at that. That's nice. I think this is a nice and suitable background for our feathered friend here. A little bit more. And people that don't paint don't know about sponging. So, you know, you or I would look at a background and say, oh, well, we've just sponged that on, that's easy. But people that aren't in the know look at it and think, oh, wow, look at that background. Keep twisting, rotating your, your sponge. So this will dry back quite a lot. It's going to have slightly more on this side, I think, than the other side. Yeah, okay then, so there we are. Um, it's not, I, I appreciate it on camera, it's not the easiest thing to spot. When you're finished with it, dump your sponge in your water pot, uh, otherwise it'll dry up and then it's finished. You'll have to go and buy some more and nobody likes doing that. Right, I'm just, it's, it's just a little bit wet, so I'm just, can you excuse me just a minute, I'm just going to dry this and then we'll transfer the image on. Hello again. Um, I've taken the opportunity while we were stopped just to clean my palette off um, and trim this bird out. This is completely dry and you'll see as it dries, it, it dries back anyway, but it's, it's there. I hope you can see it. It's just a background, that's all. So we need to transfer this fellow onto our canvas um, and we'll do it the way we always do it by creating a hinge down one side. I appreciate if you're right-handed you might find it uh, easier to hinge it on this side. Uh, it's just I'm left-handed and this is the convenient way for me. I'll tell you even when I look at videos that I've done um, and I watch it, it, it looks kind of ham-fisted the fact that I'm left-handed. It's not what you're normally used to seeing. Um, and I hope that doesn't put any of you off. Painting's the same, it's just a different hand. So we need something quite light to show up against our very dark background. So I'm going to use the white Sorrel. If ever you have any questions about anything I'm using, you're not sure how to use it or where to get it, just uh, drop me a message underneath. Uh, I pick up all my messages and respond to them. So. I'll get back to you really soon. So I'm just, oh, something else that I need to do. The Sorrel works best against something that's solid. So ordinarily I use canvas boards and they are canvas stretched over cardboard and they're very solid. This is a prop canvas. And so there's nothing supporting the middle. So when you transfer with the Sorrel, it's got nothing to push against. So you don't get a very good um, transfer. So these are called magic sponges. I've never used them for anything remotely um, magic or spongy. But three of them sort of fit in quite well into there. And that will give the Sorrel something to, uh, to push against. So something with a sharp point or a biro or 
something of that ilk. I'm not going to put this wire in. The picture doesn't need it and also it's drawing the viewer's eye away from the, the image that we want them to look at. It's too easy to follow that, go off the canvas and then you're off looking at somebody else's painting where we want them to look at this because we want them to buy it. So that's that why it isn't going in. The, the post is though. And we'll do that in a similar way to the fence posts and the robin because that worked quite well. I quite liked it. This has got a bit of a curve on the top. There's feet are in there as well. Like that. And that's perspective. That's what perspective does. Instead of looking at it flat, so the post just stops, we must be looking at this from slightly this angle going down because we can see the front of that and we can see the back of it. So the, the circle has become very, very uh, elliptical, oval. So that's uh, the post. Here is feet going in. And it's really worth taking a time doing this because um, when you come back to paint it, you, you know, you really want to know where things are because things can go badly awry if you, uh, if you don't really know where things are. If you're a, a competent drawer and you want to just draw this in, that's absolutely fine. I have no problem whatsoever with that. We, uh, on the Miss paint -a -Lot group, Miss Acrylic paint -a -Lot group, um, we're all about the painting. We're not about the drawing. So, you know, feel free to use transfer paper. It's a legitimate tool to get your image down onto your canvas. There is absolutely nothing wrong with using it. So I think that's his feet in. Magic sponges don't want to move too much. So let's put his head in. Start from there, just above his shoulder. And take care with the beak. And please note, like I said on the robin, if you watched it, the beak isn't just stuck on the front of his face. It actually goes back into his face. So don't just draw the the face round like that and then stick the beak on. It's that's not it's not how it works. Yeah, if you just draw it on his face, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like a little comedy beak. That's the pearl of wisdom of the day from Mr. Fixit. These bits are very important, really. They are what would make you look at this painting and know it's a kestrel. So there is a, a collar of sorts comes around here where the grey gives way to the brown here on his shoulders. I'll just draw down here. Can't quite work out what that dark shading is. Is it his shadow? What's, what's that bit there? I don't know. Let's have a better look at the photograph on the computer. That's the thing, of course, once you print something out, no matter how well you print it out, you're always getting a computer version uh, of it. Let's have a look. Oh, it's like a feather from the other side, I think. Not from the side we're looking at, but from the other side. I'll ignore that. I'm going to ignore that. It's this fluffy bit on the other side, but he's not going to make up that bit there. It's not going to make or break my bird, so I'm going to um, ignore it. Now, this is his wing coming up here. And it sits there. Oh, 
like so. And then this is the shadow of his wing. Down there, and then there's a bit down there. Um, and then the, the bottom of his wings are where you can see the distinct feathers. Comes up there. And then these ones, that seems to go into a little sort of fishtail at the bottom. That comes up here. And it's got uh, feathers in it too. Then we're on to the other side of the tail. And then the long tail proper starts. And this is just that fluffy bit uh, around where his legs come out. So I think I think that should pretty much be it. So let's have a look and see what we've got. Yeah, that's great. It looks a bit odd like that, doesn't it? It looks like it's got a giant head. Right, so what I need now is another picture of the bird. Have we got one? No. I can take the magic sponges out the back anyway, they've done their job very well. It's just if I don't have another picture, I have to start flapping this one over and over, um, and it gets a bit tedious. I can make a start on the, the log though, we know what that is, and it's basically uh, grey. Gray in first. I'm just going to use a quarter inch angle shader. Just pop this gray in. Bearing in mind his feet are there, so try not to catch them. Just make it easier for us if we know exactly where they are. Now I've taken my background colour over, down over the edge of my canvas and so when I get to the bottom with this I'm going to um, do the same, I'm going to carry this fence post down. I could probably get away with a bigger brush but I don't want to um, catch his feet. And this is doing a good enough job. You will find if you've put a, a base coat on, as we have here, that your next coat of paint goes on so much more smoothly. You know, you're not fighting the canvas, as can often happen um, with your first coat. So, you know, it is really worth the time and effort to put in a, a a base coat. The problem we have with the photograph is that the uh, laser print has just run out of toner. It has been telling us for ages it's running out but we've chosen to ignore it and hope it would go away but of course you know it doesn't. Let's do a new one now on the inkjet. Thank you. The best reproduction on the inkjet? No. But you know, at the end of the day, this is just. Well, I, I'd like to say it's a quick little study, but guys, you know me. Quick. Hmm. 
but I do like to make it so as beginners can do it. And if you start glossing over things, then, you know, it's all very well for us, but beginners can't follow it. Um, and then they get frustrated. Then they think they can't paint. And, you know, it's not, it's not true. They just need it explained what to do. So I'm just going to go over uh, my edge to here. All right. So you do it on the very small paper. <gasps> oh, excellent. <laughs> right, this is what we've got then, guys. <laughs> um, maybe the best thing to do is just to remove that the uh, the uh, original one that I've used as a template. It's true, isn't it? You know, when you want something really to work, it just doesn't. Just ordering some toner now for you. Good lad. Right, so that's that. The top part is slightly lighter. So I'll put some white out because we need some white anyway. It's a disfoto paper. So yeah, it is. It's a really nice image. I won't put very much white out at the moment because it's really warm in here. Because despite the fact it is actually in the middle of June, we've got the fire on, which is somewhat annoying. It's only eight degrees outside. Yeah, eight degrees. What is it? Thirteenth of June or something? Ridiculous. Right. So this top part of the uh, fence post. It's a lighter grey, but please be careful with his feet. I appreciate this looks white, but it will dry back. It has got grey in it, so it will dry back. Um, right there. A little bit there. Just to, so we know that it's at the top of the fence post. Yeah, that's fine. Still see his feet. Right, so we need to, as we did with the robin, if you didn't watch the robin, then you won't know. So we're just going to dry brush this. Excuse me, as I said, it's really warm. And you wouldn't like it if you couldn't hear me, would you? <laughs> I really suspect a lot of you would like that a lot. So, um, load your brush up with white. Go over to your towel, wipe it off. And then we're going to come back down here with a dry brush. And make some, some marks. It is pretty much everywhere this. It's what they call silvered wood when it's uh, old like this. If you get marks like that, that's great. They, they look really nice and authentic. We will be coming back in with a brown and a green, so this isn't how it's going to look when it's finished. I'm just pushing my brush down slightly harder, going back over that just to give it a little bit more coverage. You can see here where the edge of my canvas is and it's biting onto that bit uh, in particular, which is a bit of a nuisance but it happens. Get the bit up under his foot, his talons, I guess they are. He's a bird of prey. He 
you don't want this to look too regular, but you do want it to have this silvered look about it. That's coming along quite nicely. Just this bit in the corner down here, right down beneath its foot. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that. So we just need a little bit of olive green, just a little bit, and a little bit of brown. As I say, just titchy little bits. Um, we'll pick up the green first, wipe it off a little bit, and it seems to be down this side here. There's another little bit just about here. Make sure you take it up to the top of your post otherwise it starts to look a little bit odd. Um, okay now then this brown Wipe off your surplus. Come on with that. It's going to be rather more of a perfect line than I would have wished for. But we'll just work it into the surrounding green. And if it all gets too much, we'll pick up a bit of grey. Just drying out only. And come back over that. Knock it back a little bit. So yeah, that's looking, that's looking fine now. So I'm just going to mix some white in with this brown because it's just too concentrated a colour for us. There we are. I want that colour but not, uh, not as concentrated as it was. And it seems to come in down here. I'll leave that to dry. If it really dries back kind of radically, I'll come back in with some white, um, which I need to give a spritz to because it's starting to dry up already. So, what's next on the agenda? Well, I think we should start with his head. His head, as you can see, is grey with this very distinctive beak and eye, which is yellow. So let's see if we can get the, the yellows put in. It is a bright yellow and I'm going to use cad medium. No, I'm not. I'm going to use primary yellow, sorry. It's a good bright yellow and I think it's what we need for our kestrel. Don't need much of it at all. It's a good colour. Now when I transferred the eye ring in, I transferred it in the middle of the yellow bit. So it's quite alright for me to put my brush down in the yellow bit and use that as the, as the centre of my line. It's going to need a couple of coats I think because a couple of power of primary yellow looks like it's non-existent which is fine most yellows are like that they've introduced a new uh, yellow called it's got the longest name in all of the world it's benzo or something or other um, and it is opaque which is mar marvelous Oh, 
I'm just giving this one quote um, in sure and certain knowledge that I will have to come back and give it another another coat. And then this is Beak, which is also yellow. And um, we'll just cover all of this in. Um, some of it has got sort of feathers just starting there, but we'll give it a background of this colour. Because it's easier to put the feathers over it than to dance around the feathers um, with the yellow. And I've put the line in there where the grey on the beak starts. So we've got that. That's a good help. Around there. The rest of the beak is grey and then black. And just a little yellow bit there. This yellow is making me work for my money today. Work for my money. <laughs> oh dear. Should you feel like it, ladies and gents? Um, I do have a do Donate Now button on my page because I do all of these beginners tutorials free. They're all free on YouTube. But as you know, painting materials are very expensive. So if you can, I would really appreciate it if you could donate. And if you can't, that's fine. Carry on watching and enjoy. Actually, when I look at this on, on the camera, that looks green. It's absolutely not. It's bright, bright yellow. I think you can probably see it on the um, on the palette. It's just the, the background coming through. So uh, let's do the toes of his feet while I've got this little little brush in my hand. So it comes to there. I guess this is why some canvases are more expensive than others. Because when you're trying to put details in on quite a cheap canvas, um, it's quite difficult. Because the actual grain of the canvas is working against you getting a straight line. Having to pick up quite a bit of paint in one go. But don't worry, I'll get there. That comes down to about there. And the rest of it's is talon. And that comes down to about there. Yeah, that comes over there. That's one foot comes down to there. I really need quite a lot of paint in my brush to get it to think about going onto this canvas. What is it they say? A good workman never blames his tools. Mm -hmm. Draw your own conclusions. Right, I'm going to move on to a slightly larger brush where I can get a bit more paint down in one go.
Right, okay, that's one coat down. So I'll I'll leave you there. Um come back to me in a short while. All I'm gonna do is dry that and give another coat. And I'm quite sure you don't need to watch me do that. So I'll join you again when this has got two coats. Right, I've taken the decision whilst you were away that the yellow was just too yellow. So I've added to it a little bit of this brown that we had out to uh, do the sponging with. And I think it, I think it's a more appropriate colour for him. The other thing that I would say is that his legs aren't smooth. They're not like, as if, not like I've just painted them. And they, ha they seem to have on, let's look at the bigger one, sort of hoops going across it, like wrinkles almost. So let's see if we can put some of those on. Um, I'm going to need a very fine brush. We'll try this one and see if we can achieve that. I'll just try it with some of this brown. Drip on the brush. Um, so it's just sort of hoops, really. They're irregular, um, but just they're there. And I don't think we can ignore them. So what happens when it gets down to his feet, I wonder? Well, the tools have got them on too. Seems to go up to there. And this one comes down here. Yeah, I think that's um, it's much more like the fellow me lad. Well, seeing as we're doing feet and whatever, let's do his talons uh, and his beak. And then those fine parts are done with. So we really just need the teensiest bit of black. And with the same brush as we've just used to um, put the rings on his legs. I'm just going to pick up some black. And there's an under part of his beak which stops there. I think I've wiped one oh, no, no, that's right. Just got lost on for a little minute there. And then there's a line comes from the middle, which is here, down over that black that we've just put in and down to that very beaky looking beak. So make sure that you get the the real beakiness of it in. And I know it doesn't look much on camera, um, but it, it will will look when you've got it when you've got it in. Just so make sure that you've got that line in from there down to the bottom. Now, seeing as we um, are doing his beak, let's just nip our brush out, pick up some white. And that's still got black in the brush, so it's giving us a grey. And we'll just do the top part of his beak as well. Which is white going into that black. The brightest part is up here. There. And then it sort of comes down into his beak. Gives us a good look at the shape of it of his beak, um, and also <clears throat> there's a little bit in here. Just like that. Just fades off. 
So just to make sure that we've got that white right on the top, um, which is there, just to give it another little coat. So there we are, so that fades off into his black beak. Now his talons are pretty similar, they're basically black and they've got just white highlights on them. But I think his beak, you can't really see it very well, but it does look okay. Looks okay, I'm quite happy with it. So, so there's talons, so there's, ooh, there's one comes here. And they're quite long, actually. Um, there's one up here. There's one here. I'm just going off a picture rather more than. I'm not sure what that bit of yellow is about. And it's one here. And then lastly, this one hanging on the side. Okay. So as I say, I'm not really sure what what that's about. I've got a glass of lemonade here and I very nearly just put my brush into it. I'm just going to mix a little bit of um, grey. A bit of grey up and I'm going to go over that because I just don't know what it's... It doesn't make sense in my story. So I'm just painting that out. And yeah, that makes perfect sense. That's fine. His beak looks good. His legs look fine. His talons need a bit of white on them. So let's get a bit of white. And it is pretty much a highlight, this. It's, uh, the talons aren't, aren't white. It's just a bit of highlight on them. It's got the slightest little bit there. Um, that's one that goes down, follows the talon down. And it's on the same. So there we are, that's fine, that white will dry back and uh, it'll look perfect. The only other thing is he's got this sort of, I don't know what that is, it must be some sort of sensory um, thing, this mark in his beak. I don't know whether it's for smelling, I'm going for smelling. I don't know, but that's what I'm saying anyway. And it's about... just a circle really partly filled in like that so yeah okay that's fine so I think it's time probably to move on to the grey around his head so we can largely get away with well it is lighter than this this is our neutral grey so we'll take that and we'll add uh, some white into it just to give us a, a lighter tone. And we actually also want a lighter tone again. So that's the mid one. And I'll put some, some more grey out. <coughs> Not much, because we want it to be lighter. We want it to have more white in it. Put that in, because I've got that left over. That should be enough, I think. I hope so. Let's mix that. 
and see, see what shade we've got. So this is quite light, this one. It wants to be quite light, I mean. A bit lighter than that again, I would say. Let's do battle with this giant sachet. that in and then we really should have a nice light light gray and a, and a mid gray and if we need a darker gray it comes out the tube that's rather a lot of paint there right so let's just have a look he's got quite a dark bit there under his eye which looks Maybe even darker than that. Um, but we'll start with that, see where we get to. And a darker bit up here, away from his eye. And there's a light bit, and then actually the whole of his top of his head is this darker grey. Try and do it in short little strokes if you can. I mean, we're obviously going to have to come back into this, but the short little strokes are really good foundation for, for the work that we're going to come in and do uh, on the second pass. Right, so these sort of, this one's almost, it's almost a rough around his neck. We'll go straight up like that. Well, suddenly, all of a sudden, he started to look like a like a bird. <laughs> and this comes down to there, but then it goes lighter. And there's a bit down here that's quite dark, actually, darker probably than the colour I've got mixed. But it's all right. It's a good. It's a good start. And it's sort of darker grey, little bits of dark grey coming out from round this rough of feathers. Wow, what a difference that's made. Um, so we'll move on to the lighter, the lighter colour that we mixed. And there's a, pea, a piece of feather right above his eye here that is uh, very light. Just there. It's a little bit up the side of his beak. It's light. And there's some little bits up here. There's some light bits around um, interspersed with a darker, a darker colour. Especially when you get round to this bit. So round his eye. It's, it's quite light. And down here. This bit really is light under his beak. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that to dry, I think. No, I need something in there. It's, a, it's the darker one, I think, I need in there. I think I need to reassess whether I need a, a darker, a darker grey. I think it's possible that I do. So give me five minutes to have a think about things um, and I'll be right back.
Right, okay, I'm quite liking this bird's head, actually, this kestrel's head. And in places you can see the um, the, the ground coming through, and I, I actually really like that. So, for once, I'm not going to mess too much. The only thing I am going to put in, he's got this really dark bit just above his eye and just under his eye. And I think that's all the messing I'm going to do, which I know, what a shocker. Um, I'm just going to take a bit of black, mix it into here. Just give me a darker grey. I don't even think that's dark enough, actually. Everything's drying up, so let's give it a... Let's reawaken everything. Yeah, I think, I think, I think that's a nice dark grey there. That's good. Okay, so let's just pinch all that mixed up colour off. There was a fighting chance. So as I say, there's just this bit that comes in here. Oh no, that's not dark enough. That's just not dark enough. Yeah, might be there now. Um, it must be just above his eye. There's a bit of pure black, I think. Uh, and it goes down from his eye down there, which also needs a little bit of black in, I think. And then this is darker as well. Here. Right, so let's just go for black, the tiniest bit of grey. Because I don't really want to put just black in it, because that will just deaden it. So he's just got this dark, dark bit there above his eye. And these markings that go down like that. And up here is dark. So okay, I'm quite liking him so far. He's, he's, uh, he's doing a good job for me. Not too much of that on there. So let's go in for this lightest of light again. And there's just a mark just above there. And actually just below there as well. Uh, and then there's quite a lot of light in here. Down into this uh, section coming down from his eye. Quite a bit of white in here. And it just goes up like that. And it just catches into there. So yeah. I think that's pretty much his head done. Looks quite kestrelly to me. I am no ornithologist though, so I'm not sure. But it looks it looks like the photo, which has got to be good, surely. Uh, right, okay, shall we put his eye in now that we're here? Because he's looking a bit dead around the eye area. Uh, I need some black. Okay, where's the black gone? Oh, it's right here. Right under my nose. Just a little tiny bit. That's way too much, but... So I think when we get his eye put in, his whole face hopefully will come to life. I think we might need to go around again and see yellow. I don't think that yellow line is thick enough in parts. So let's hope that some of this is still alive. Oh no, none of it. Oh, might be a little bit there. Let's just thicken that, that up a bit. Um, make it more obvious and try and keep the eye really, really round. Yeah, I think that's 
it's a bit better. Um, so let's rinse that out, just get a spot of white. Well, in this case, very light grey. Just a spot on the end of your brush. And he's looking fairly centrally. That's where he's looking. Now when you look at this bit around, the yellow around his eye, it's got some dark markings in it. So just get the teensiest bit, just like we did on his legs, a really tiny little bit of paint. And I'm just going to put those lines in. Very faint, but they are there. Right, I'm happy with his head now. I think that looks good. So I think we'll move on to his to his wing. Just looking at it, I think probably black is the colour we want to go for first. And um, get the bottom bottom of his wings put in. Off, or I'm just going to make a mess. So I'm still hopefully going for the sort of more loose approach, which never really works for me. Um, this is this fishtail bit, so I'll pop that in there um, and then just follow the line. You know, once you've got this in, you can put your flip your. That's a very wet brush. You can flip your transfer back over, so that you can get the details of where the feathers go, etc. But at the moment, you can see that this is the the black. This is black. It really, is dark. By that I mean sometimes something is black, but it's not black. This really is black. Got a lot of water on my brush. And they go up to the lines that we uh, marked out for the for the feathers up here. So I'll just paint the black up to there, which will be easier for us to paint the lighter colour over it. It may need another coat. Um, see how it dries it may need another coat um, and then this one is just it's solid black don't need to worry about coming back for any feathers for that one because it's just pure black and it's got this gap uh, in, in as you can see there so We've left that. Now then looking at his tail, the bottom part of it is black and then there's a section up here that's black and a section there. So let's uh, put those in. So the very bottom of his, of his uh, tail feathers are black. Doesn't come up quite so far that bit there. Um, it does. And let's see if we can pop these other black bits in. There's a there's black that comes from there, and then it sort of fattens out. Like that. And then there's a black section in here. There is a white line between this black section and the the wing so we'll leave that line there and then we know where, where we are. Um, that's in shadow but I don't want to put that in just yet. Uh, I'd sooner put that in with a glaze over the top so it's time to then move on to uh, the wing and the shoulders. We'll put the wing in first, I think. I'm going to just have to put some more paint out for this because it's uh, my existing paint. So 
has given up the ghost. So it's this sort of colour. I'd say it's a pretty perfect colour for it actually. That's that Lasau paint that I told you about. It's called the uh, Oxide Brown Light. They seem to go a lot of numbers, this company, so it's at number 965. Now, the Kestrel himself, he's got quite a lot of black spots in him. But we're going to ignore those for the time being. They are kind of the last thing that we'll do. We just want to get these feathers in. His tummy, his shoulders and, and his wing here. So we'll start on his wing just to check that we've got the right colour. It might be a little bit bright, but down the bottom of his... Where am I? What's that? What's that bit there? So, yeah, it starts here. Yeah, I think that's just going to be a little bit bright. Yeah, we're going to have to mix. Uh, I've got some grey mixed up here, so let's mix that through it and see what we get. Yeah, that's probably better, a better colour, I think. Let's mix it properly. Let's go over that bit that we just put in. This one comes down to here. There's a sort of ghost of a shadow there, of a wing feather. So I'll just put it in very lightly. Sort of the same colour, but not exactly. I think I need a little bit more brown on that. Tidy that up. Okay, so as we proceed up his wing, it gets slightly lighter, although there are still some parts of this colour. So let's just introduce those where, where we think they're needed. He has a white flash uh, on the top of his wing going around, so we definitely want to put that in. It's probably one of his key things that you would notice about Kestrel if you knew about such things. Right, so we've got our undercover in. I would say that's fine. Maybe a darker bit down there. I'm just going to darken this up a little bit. It's it's almost going pink on me, to be honest. This isn't a colour I've used before, um, so hence you know I didn't follow my own advice, which is when you get a new paint, um, see what it does. Mix it with yellow. Mix it with white. See see what it does. And um, I didn't do that with this one and as a consequence it's throwing me a bit of a curveball here. This is a bit better I think. I'm not going to go over all of it. I quite like that colour that we had. I think it's um, suitable. So I'll just add some more feathers to his wing and then we'll come in with a lighter one. What's going on there? That's black actually, that bit there, yeah. So in my attempt to be loose, I'm attempting loose. Well, you know, giving it a good go. 
and then we'll just get a mix a lighter one again. I need to put that bit of black in before I forget about it. Where's my little brush? Here's my little brush. Um, I've got some black out, uh, so it's not a big deal. It's just this bit here that is black. And I hate the idea of some ornithologist looking at this. <laughs> well, I hate the idea of that anyway, because um, I'm sure it's, you know, it's not exactly accurate, is it? I mean, let's be fair. So, okay, that's, that's sort of tidied that up a little bit. Actually, that the feather that we put in as a ghost, all you can really see is the edge of it. So, I'll just amend that. Yeah, that's fine. So let's get us some light version of this. So um, I've been using this grey, it seems to have worked all right so far. So, I mean, it is mostly white to be honest. So, now is that going to be light enough? Hmm. Put a bit more in and see. You know, if ever you're in a, a real pickle with your colour mixing, and you can't get what you, you're not sure if the colour you've got is the colour you want, then just, I've got so much paint on here, just paint onto your picture, put a little bit of paint onto your picture and see if it's the colour that you were after, if not, you know, amend it. So here's our light, and there's quite a lot of light down here, and down onto this one here. It seems to get sort of lighter as we get nearer the top. Try not to make them even. Sure, it's not meant to meet at the minute. Long strokes, short strokes. As long as they're all in the ooh, wrong spot. As long as they're all vaguely in the way that the they should be. So what's going on here? That's quite light. Let's make these a little bit more defined. Okay, I think I'm going to have to go in back into my mid colour, or my darker colour. Some more feathery sort of strokes onto it. Yeah, we're getting there, we're getting there. All about layering, guys, that is exactly what it's all about. You have to layer acrylics. I do want it to look quite loose, but I still want it to look fairly authentic. So up in this very top region here is actually grey. Top of his wing is, is quite grey. So let's get a bit of grey. And these are tiny little feathers really. Crunch a bit there. And then we need some some of the lighter our light mix grey and white this one just to go around his wing. Just get some of that into a clean region. And it kind of starts from here. 
That looks really, really white, doesn't it? But it's not, I can assure you. And it comes all the way down this leading edge of this of his wing. Got the hair there, which is not helping. That's fine, we'll tidy that up when we do the rest. Um, wipe the paint off and just pull that white just into his wing a little bit like that. That's fine. Okay, so I'm thinking I'm going to let that sit like that overnight. Come back and see how it's dried, if it's dried too dark, too light, whatever. I think that's what done for the day. See you tomorrow. Well, here we are back again at the Kestrel. It's actually been a few days since I last saw you, but that doesn't matter. We're just uh, carrying on. And looking at the Kestrel, looking at the um, photograph that I've got, the, the log that he's standing on, that needs a bit of work, but we'll leave that till towards the end. The thing that I've really been noticing as I've looked at it is I can't actually see the beak, the end of his beak, which is critical for a bird of prey. So um, what I'm going to do is just take a bit of white and just add a highlight on it um, that's not actually there. But I, um, I feel I really need it um, to be able to, to see his beak there. No more than that. That's absolutely fine. Um, just just so we can see it. Uh, <clears throat> so seeing as I'm talking about white at the minute, let's get our um, dagger brush and see if we can get these uh, tail feathers put in. I think he'll start to look a bit nicer. A bit nicer then. So with the dagger, you need to use a little bit of water with it. It's not a strong brush um, and it won't push heavy bodied paint around. So you have to sort of water it down a little bit. So paying heed to my uh, reference picture, let's try and get these tail feathers put in. Let's go around there and then just all come down. like that. You can't actually, I'm just going to use a small brush for that, it's going to be easier for me. Um, dagger brushes don't go around corners very easily. Well they do, but they splay out, which is uh, not what we want on this occasion. I'll just marry these up. And that one comes right on the edge. So there we are, that's that's all that's needed for that. There's actually nothing on this back one at all. And nothing on the edge of the tail. But there is um there's a white flash up the side of his tail, right where that transfer paper is. And actually it carries on right on up to up to there. And it's sort of a double tram line, really. And it goes up to about there like that. Fine, so we're making progress. The rest of this is a kind of grey colour. So where else have we got white that we haven't got it as yet? Um, there's a little bit down there. I'll just add with this small brush. You could add it with any brush, really. It's just down there. A flush. Um, and just various little bits actually on his on his uh, wing. This is his wing. And then this it goes down here, right the way around his wing actually. It's got this white on. And don't be worried if you add too much because we'll be going back in anyway. And we can thin it down thin that line down if we if we need to. 
Uh, this one on the top of his wing that we've drawn in in grey, I'm just going to reinforce with white because it is quite bright. It comes down here. We need to be careful when we're putting our next feathers in to sort of try and cover that up so it doesn't look just like a straight line. Um, I'm not really seeing any more white. Particularly, I mean, it's not going anywhere. It's still on our palette. We can go back to it when we choose. So um, I'll just rinse. I don't want to let that little brush sit in the water because the ends of it will just curl over on its own weight. So I'll take that out and just rinse the dagger brush out as well because I can't see too many places where we might need to use that again. I'll just rinse that out. Right, so let's see if we can get the shoulder of this bird put in. Um, I'm going to use a quarter inch angle shader. This one's actually dog rough. It's got no chisel edge left on it at all, but it's it's fine. We're painting feathers. It's absolutely fine. And for that, we'll use a similar mix to the one we used for his wing, which we haven't finished yet. Um, and that's this, this brown, this uh, lasso oxide brown light number 965. Uh, and a bit of white and just get down to that color that we uh, we had before. This is slightly lighter actually uh, on his shoulder than we had on the wing. So it just needs a bit more white to it. Oh no, that's a million miles away. See how it looks on the dark background, but I think that's probably about near enough. Um, and it, mm, it's quite light, so I'm going to go for the lighter part of him up here with this um, and then I'll darken the other bit down because this bit up here on his top of his shoulder down to about there is actually quite light so I'll just put that in this lighter colour try and as I say paint over the the edges so it looks like feathers um, there's also a light bit in here don't go over the top of the wing the wings sitting on top of the body so don't let these brush strokes that you're putting in now go on over the wing but they can go up into his neck in fact they should be going up into his neck so this just comes down here um it's part of his chest Always put your brush strokes in the way that the feathers are going. Um, otherwise, when you come back, you'll be fighting that all the time. Um, so I think now we can probably add a little bit more brown to this mix. Slightly darker colour. And come down here a little bit. Yeah, that's, that's nice. Nice transition there. Feed it into the, the lighter bit that you've done. You know, do a few strokes into that lighter bit. So there's not a distinctive line. I do want a line around there. And around his wing. There, I think that looks fine. Happy enough with that. This is the sort of grey whitey bit in here. Um, Let's just have a look at his wings again. They are quite, there's a quite a dark section on them at the bottom, so let's mix that. And it's it's darker than that even actually. Let's just use it as it comes and see what happens. So that's over that white tip that we've just put in. Just leave a little bit of it showing. There we are. That goes up quite a way, but it's a dis it's distinct from the feather next to it. So um, make sure that you leave a, a gap in between us feathers there. Okay. Um, of course, we've still got to put the black spots on him. 
Um, I'm just going to mix up a slightly darker colour here. So up from here we've got a slightly darker bit here. We'll try and make this our last pass if we can. He's got quite a few layers on him now. Because we'll have to go back with the black spots and they may need a little bit of seating down. By that I mean a little bit of going over with our with this colour just to settle it down. So you can see he's sort of got rows of these feathers. And they're not quite as distinct as that. I'm just coming with a slightly lighter one of that. Let's sort of make them a little bit more distinct from each other. Maybe even lighter than that actually in some places. That's it. You can sort of see that he's got layers of these leaves, I nearly called them, feathers. Like that going up and leave it like that until we get the black on. I think I think that looks fine. It looks what we're aiming for. This is dried back to a good colour, which I'm pleased about. Um, we also need this very light colour, this lightest colour here, uh, in in around here. A lot of it's in shadow. But some of it isn't, so we'll pop it in now while we've got it mixed. It's just a sort of fluffy bit that birds have where the tail joins on. I don't think I'm going to have enough of that. I'll have to mix some more. And that's dry already, my goodness me. Let's just give my palette a bit of a spray because it's obviously wanting to dry up on me today. So this is a sort of fluffy bit. It, it needs a shadow over it but we're coming over it with a wash anyway um, for this part so we can just include that in the part that gets a wash. And this bit here is also just a fluffy part. I don't know how better to describe it to you really. That's just kind of what it is. Um, it just comes up, comes up quite away actually, and then we'll put the wash over it. Yeah, okay. Right then, let's move on to the grey, oh, which I've already got out. So we need a mixture of grey and white. Um, it's my palette knife here. It's quite a light grey, so we'll take quite a bit of white, a little bit of grey. Let's mix those together, see what we get. Not grey enough, a bit more. Yeah, I think that's probably about right. It, actually, I might add a little bit more because sometimes when you're putting colour like this on a dark background, it just looks like white, and that's that's not what we're after. We do want it to be grey. That's grey for sure. So let's get this brush. So there's a little bit of this going on here. Not over the wing, but you can bite it into the, the neck collar area. It does come down into this area as well. So a nice mixture of the two, like that. That's that's fine. That's what we're after. And 
just sort of comes up into here as well. Yeah, that's, I like that, that's nice. So I'm going to use this colour for his chest. There's a darker region there, but I'll do that after. Um, so I'm really just going to do his chest in this uh, light grey. Bring it up to his uh, head. I'm just going to do this bit too because it's going to have a wash on it. Uh, so that's fine if I do it in this colour and then put a wash over it. It'll darken those those parts down, obviously. Well, unless we used a whitewash, which would lighten them. So, yeah, I'm quite happy that it's this colour that we were aiming for. And they follow the line of his chest. The feathers follow the line of his chest up, as you would expect. Nothing too fancy. Okay, so quite like that. That's quite nice. Maybe a little scant there, but yeah, I quite like that. See the way our um, dark background is really working for us. It's doing a really good job for us um, in as much as we don't have to cover the whole thing. And it's giving this, because we're using that stroke, it's giving the illusion of feathers and depth in his plumage um, without us having to do too much to it at all, really. So let's just add a little bit of, a tiny bit of black to this mix. So we've just got a bit of a darker colour, slightly darker maybe than that. There we are, that's probably sufficient. And it's just down into here, I think it's just sort of, that's not dark enough, just into the shadow uh, of his head, I think, possibly. I don't want to get it too dark which is why I'm just taking small bits at a time. And it's just down there, I think it's just a shadow. Like that. Just sort of using the tip of my angle, angle brush, that's fine. Um, let's make a glaze now and just go over that bit. And then we can come back. This is my glaze medium. It's been around a long time, as you can see. I don't use a lot of it. Stay Laroni glaze medium. Um, this one's matte. You can get shiny stuff as well, glossy. Uh -huh. Enter it. Um, and I'll just take a little bit out with, with my palette knife. Don't need masses. That's probably way too much, actually. If you haven't got glaze medium, don't rush out and buy any. You can just water your paint down if you want to. Um, it'll have a, it'll have the same effect. Professionally and technically, it's not the right thing to do to water your paint down that that much. It it um it stops the paint sticking eventually, and the paint will flake off. So if you've got glazing medium, it's um it's a much better option. But if you haven't, you'll get by with water. So I want a sort of, uh, that sort of colour, pick up a bit of glazing medium with that colour and I'll just come in and put it where, where we think it should go. It starts about here and it comes up to there and then it goes back up and meets the, uh, meets the top of the, the wing. So let's just pull that out over there and when it dries you'll see that it's um, still allowing you to see what's behind, what's underneath. I really ought not to have done a straight line there. I'm kind of regretting that now. So there we are, that's the, the shadow of his, of his wing if you like. Um, things in isolation like that when you do them you think oh no I don't think that's right it 
once we get everything else done, you'll see that is right and it does belong there. Um, so, where else do I need some down? Oh, let's just pick up some more. Slowly yeah, it is. I picked up a bit more glazing liquid, glazing fluid with it, so it should be lighter. I've got more glazing fluid than blinking in anything else now, I think. So this in here is, let's just put some glazing, some glaze over it. So it goes to about there. And then it comes back over here. And it sort of meets up there. I think that's right, is that right? Or have I got lost somewhere? I don't know, I think I should have left that bit light. And this bit dark, okay. Let's put the dark bit in first because I've got that on our brush. So that's the sort of lighter bit that goes in there. Um, and I'm going to have to go back to this colour because I've just glazed over it. <laughs> it really is easy to get lost, guys. Really, I keep telling you that, but it is. I don't know if I've got any of that left now. A little bit more white in that. Okay, let's try that. So that's just this bit here that I've gone over that I, sh I, I shouldn't have done. Should have left it as sort of light brown. It's kind of got bits coming off at this, I think, as it gets towards its legs. So I'll try and pop those in. Okay, so where are we now? Are we right or are we wrong? Um, yeah, well, it is what it is. Let's put some grey uh, on the tail and then we have at least got the whole bird covered. What are you saying, Mr. Fix-It? What's, what's looking not right? Have to speak up. Oh, yeah. I can't see exactly with that hand what you're pointing to. You have to get up and show me. Yeah. Just the bit between his legs. Oh, here. His two eye should be coming further down into his legs, do you think? His legs look a little detached. Yeah. Just between his legs, like. Just thinking it's just a bit high up, do you think? Okay. Instantly. Excellent. Easy work around. What I don't do when I'm doing these tutorials is stand back and look. And it's it's something that you can afford yourself the luxury of doing uh, when you're doing this at home. It's it's really good idea to just stand back, have a good look at it, have a cup of coffee, whatever. Come back to it, look at it again with fresh eyes. And it's amazing what you see that you couldn't see from two inches away when you're painting it. Um, whenever I'm doing a larger painting, I like to do that. Just make a coffee, set it on the mantelpiece, sit on the sofa, and I look at it. And 
yeah, it's amazing what you see. Bits that you thought were absolutely bang on that maybe just aren't quite so bang on. I think that's not too bad there. I'll wait till that dries and I'll go over it again with the white lines, but that's kind of what it's doing. Think so okay right then it's probably time that we had a look at the at the black um, dots on him however um, I did pull this up on my computer to have a look at the actual photograph and it's amazing how much is missed when you print it out this is on photo paper and even so there's a lot of detail that's on the actual image that hasn't been printed out so my recommendation to you is to get your reference picture, keep it on your iPad, your laptop, MacBook, whatever, on, on your desk when you're painting. Because otherwise, you're really just going to miss things, um, as I've just proved to myself. So I'm on the image, there are some uh, white tips to his tail, which I couldn't see. It's not on my... Uh, in my image, my printed out image. So I'm kind of winging this because I don't really know where they are. Winging it. <laughs> I'll put them there. I think that looks right to me. Um, not being a Kestrel expert. I'm just going to put this white line in again. Up here. It seems to play a bit of a part in him. Um, and the other thing is that he's got sort of black... Um, a bit of water in that black, soften it up a bit. There we are. Uh, Mr. Fix, it's just brought the uh, the original. So you can see what I'm talking about. It's got white tips, slightly more white actually than I've given him, but I'm, I'm all right with that. Um, and then he's got these black markings on his on his tail feathers. This is Mr. Fix It's iPad. I'm not usually privy to being able to use it. I need it set up a bit more than that. Um, so I'm just going to put these black markings in. And they don't run straight across. This bit at the back is obviously a separate feather completely to this one at the front. I think. I think that's probably about right. Those little ones keep going up. Yeah, I, I think that's right. I think that's the detail in there. Enough detail in there now. I've just gone over my white line, which I'm not overly happy with. I want to put that back in. Just put it back in there, right? Okay. Uh, and on this one, there's a bit of grey shading as we get to the top. So let's just mix up a little bit of grey, maybe a little bit lighter than that. And that comes in around here. That's really light. Let me use a brush that I can actually mix some paint with. Mr. Fixit's been on at me for ages about how you can't see details on a photograph. And I thought that it was perfectly adequate, to be honest. If you copy what's on the photograph, you won't be far wrong. Um, but I reckon he's probably right. So that's just a bit, it's just a bit darker in there as it comes up to his body. Just on that bottom side here. There, now then, having a look at this part, I'm quite happy with this. That, that's all right. The um, wash and whatever on that has, has worked out quite well, I think. It's adequate. It's not brilliant, but it's adequate. But here, where I did think that there was a bit of fluffiness, there's a whole heck of a lot of fluffiness. And in here, there is a dark, dark region. 
which I think is the fluffiness that we're seeing on this side, on the other side. Um, and it's sort of between his legs as well. So now we need to put the fluffy feathers on. And for that, I'm going to use the um, this brush, the um, dagger. And I'm going to use the lightest stuff, lightest stuff, the lightest paint mix that we've got for these fluffy, fluffy bits here. And you'll find this is a really good brush for this. So you just on, just on the tip of it, you get lovely fine lines. They're not all going the same way. Don't do them like sentries on duty. And this will just seat his legs into his body as well. So that's pretty much it really for that side. Some of them are quite long actually. So there we are. And the ones on the other side. Let's just curve that there. Just don't like that. That's better. Uh, the ones on the other side are grey. I think we just don't have enough light on them that's um, to see any other colour apart from the grey. Everything's drying up on me. We'll use, I want to use a light enough grey that's going to show against the background but it's quite dark so um, so he's got sort of fluffy bits coming down here coming up into that grey area. Just use the tip of your um, your dagger brush. There now, that's it's got fluff. You got fluff, right? Whether it looks right or wrong, who knows? But that's um, which I think they probably go more that way. Right, I, I don't know if it enhances the picture, I'm not mad keen on it, but they're there, so let's put them in. Right, so now we have the task of putting the dots on. Now, they look black. I reckon they are black, but I'm going to mix up a little bit of Payne's Grey, which is black with ultramarine blue in it. You make your own Payne's Grey. Um, you'll see that it's got blue in it. If you add white to it, it'll show the blue. And I'm just going to add a little bit of black through that Payne's grey because to me, they look like they've got a slightly dark blue cast. Now I'm using our teaser because I don't have any other brand of uh, Payne's grey. So it's probably going to be quite transparent. And let's just concentrate on where these need to go. I'm using the toe of my angle brush. So if ever anything was easy to get lost in, it's this. My, my. It would have been so much more convenient if I could have um, transferred it, but I tried. wasn't having it. You could use a little round for this if you wanted. Uh, it'd probably be more convenient. And there's quite a few in a sort of line here. This isn't as translucent as I thought it was going to be, it's transparent. Sometimes the Arteza paint is uh, very, very Thin. This is, I'm still on his wing here, there's little lines of it. And then it comes up here, up 
big mark in there. Just concentrate on it, guys. Really get yourself in the zone and concentrate. Get to here, and there's some sort of lines going on. Sorry, I'm not saying much, but if I say too much, I'll lose where I am. I'm not altogether certain that I'm in the right place anyway. <laughs> So there's still spots in here, even although it's in the shade of his wing. So there's quite a bit of mark in here. I will say the background for us is doing a really good job because it's providing some of the uh, some of these markings for us where we haven't gone over it and left the background to show through. There's some lines going on here. Just put those in sort of lightly to make sure that that's where we want them. Yeah, I think we're all right there. Okay. How are we doing then? How's that? Can you see any areas, Mr. Fix it that I've missed out? Maybe around the top of his wing here, there's maybe some markings. There are some markings. It's fairly comprehensive. This looks a bit bare here. Don't don't think because a bit looks bare. I'll just add some spots there. Just check your reference picture, and see what's going on. But here I can see there's definitely three spots in a line that I haven't put on. So that's them on now. I don't think that's too bad. You? No, the nice thing is it's drying back. It's, yeah. It's, it's sinking in as yeah. it were. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was thinking that we were going to have to do that and then go over it with another... Um, sort of coat of plumage but actually I quite like that what do you think I quite like that right so some little bits that we need to tidy up then like this bright sort of mark round uh, round his wing use that gray for it and just comes sort of comes down here and then it sort of strokes in like that. I'm not sure actually, I think it's more rounded than that. I just told myself the luxury of putting that right.
Yeah, okay. Uh, is there anything that needs fixing? Right, let's uh, uh, have a look at this fence post then. Because uh, as it dried back, it just <laughs> took absolutely every bit of colour with it, pretty much. So I'm just going to get some white, um, load my brush up with it, and then wipe it off on a towel. I'm just going to come down and dry brush some white into here. It needs more. It needs help. Don't we all? I need help. I'm trying to avoid this towel. It is amazing how far you can get on a dry brush still laying paint down. This dry brush technique does does work to give it to make it look aged. Over this side, I'm going to put some uh, green on it. Way loads of paint. There. I mean, even like that, it looks better than it did. So I'm just going to use a little bit of sort of an olive green colour because I think that's kind of the colour of lichen, that sort of light greeny, yellowy colour. Same again, load your brush up, wipe it off. It's going to come down here and put some. So green in it. Try not to get it sort of a, br a brush's width, because then it, you know, people look at it and oh, it's just one sweep with a paintbrush. Um, I think that's fine. I'm quite happy with that. I quite like it like that. I don't think it needs any more. It might dry back a bit and I might have to put some more on, but I think we're all right with that. Uh, there's a little bit of shadow under the talons of the birdie, which is pretty black, actually. I'm going to use this mixture there. I've got this uh, Payne's Grain Black. And it is just a little bit of shadow. Quite a bit there, just to make him look like he is actually standing on something. It's just, it's just where it's resting on it and sort of where the sun's pushing the shadow to. Yeah, that's fine. It looks like he's actually grounded on it now. And that, I think, ladies and gents, is our castrol. I think these lines here need a bit of... Um, as soon as I've got some glaze medium out, I'm just going to glaze them back because they're a bit in your face for my liking. Um, so I'll just take a teeny bit of black, a bit of glaze, that's fine. I don't want them to, I don't want to disappear them. Oh, I haven't got any black in there. I don't want to make them disappear, but I do I want them to snap back a bit. That's great. Yeah, that's better. Okay, can you say anything else that was neat? Yeah, I can actually. This line at the top of his wing is really 
Yeah, and when you've got your glaze reading, the, the shadow under the the wings gone a bit too light now, do you think? Yeah. Under his wings. Yeah. Yeah, where well you glazed it before. Yeah, it's yeah, gone, possibly. Perhaps gone a bit light. Yeah. Maybe that needs darkening up a bit again. Right, let's try and get this the right shape this time. Come about to there, and then it goes back in. That's a better shape this time, I think. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And then there's this lighter, lighter one again. Just add a touch a bit of that to the glaze, and it sort of comes round from here, and it meets up with that one there. And glaze that in there. And then pretty much all of this is in some sort of shade. Like that. Which looks odd, but that's what it is. Uh, then we've got his feet. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying that looks too white. It's not actually too white. I'll tell you what it is. It's too round doesn't look natural. It's like that would never happen to this bird. So I'm just going to take oh, I didn't draw you know. Let's just bite into that a little bit, just to take that real roundness off it. We want it to be there, but I don't want it to be that round. It looks artificial, contrived. That yeah, looks a bit better. Yeah, yeah. I like the shadow under the wing now, that's sitting well. Yeah, okay, that's it, that's job done. Just need to sign it and sell it. <laughs> All right, thanks everybody for joining in. Um, it's been a bit of a trial, this one, in the, in the end. It was going so well, I should have just carried on when I was doing it the other day. Anyway, that's another birdie for our collection. Um, not sure how many that is now. One, two, three, four, four. And the next one is an eagle. So see you on that one. Thanks very much for joining me. Bye.